Hello, welcome to the last lecture of the course two phase flow and heat transfer. Today we will be discussing about gas solid flow. At the end of this lecture, we will be understanding how to characterize a particle suspended in a gas. We will be finding out what is the differentiation between dense and diluted flow. We will be seeing how different flow regimes can be characterized and what are the necessary conditions for occurring those flow regimes. We will be defining saltation velocity in the context of pneumatic conveying line. At the end, we will be calculating pressure drop inside a pipeline carrying gas solid two phase flow. So, we will start with a slide where we have shown all the occurrences of two phase flow, okay, gas solid two phase flow in specific. So, in nature, we can find out in Sandstrom and Volcano, we can see gas solid two phase flow. So, here I have given a nice picture of Sandstrom in desert as well as I have given a volcanic eruption picture. Okay, which shows a typical gas solid two phase flow at the uh, top of this volcano. Definitely in industries, we are having lots of applications of gas solid two phase flows. Some of them are pneumatic conveying, fluidized bed and spray drying. Okay. So, here I have shown uh, some examples, experimental and numerical examples where gas solid flow is occurring in industry. Now, there are different types of solid particles which can coexist in gas. Okay. Depending on the size of the particles, we define them as fine particles and coarse particles. Later on, I will tell you how those fine and coarseness can be defined. Just to name few fine particles are fly ash, cement and flour. Okay. In coarse particle, we can categorize sand, wheat, mustard. So, you can see I have given separate figures for fine particles and coarse particles over here. Okay. Now, uh, how this fine particle and gas uh, mixture can be categorized in case of flow regimes that has been given by Gildert okay, in his 1973 research paper. So, this famous uh, graph is actually called Gilbert's diagram in which we can find out different flow regimes okay, of uh, uh, different particles based on their sizes. Okay. In abscissa, we are having the diameter of the particle dp, the scale is chosen uh, my, as micrometer and in ordinate, we are having rho p minus rho g which is the particle density minus the gaseous density, okay. unit is as usual kg per meter cube. So, if you see as we increase the diameter, okay, then we will be finding out at very lower diameter, we are having particles in cohesive form. So, that means the particles will be actually attracting themselves and forming a coagulation. So, this is cohesive particles. Okay. Then with the increase of little bit of diameter or increase of the rho p minus rho g, the density ratio difference, you will be finding out those are arable. That means with the flow of gas, those will be actually flying with the gas. Okay. Then later on, you will be finding out if we increase the diameter further, we will be finding out sand like. Sand like means those are having some settling tendency also in air. And at the end, we will be having spoutable, spoutable means if you have some hopper from there, if you drop the particles, those will be falling inside the gaseous stream in the uh, by virtue of your uh, gravitational force. So, that, that is called a spoutable nature of the uh, solids. Okay. So, this is a spoutable nature, these are applicable for very higher diameter of the uh, particles. Okay. So, based on your diameter and uh, density difference between the particle and the gas, these four types of uh, uh, particles can be obtained, okay. starting from cohesive, arable, sand like and spoutable. Okay. Next, let us see as we have talked about dp particle diameter. So, definitely we need to know how to characterize the particle. Okay. So, here I have shown you how to characterize the particle. There are different ways. One way is characterizing the particle size is what you do, you uh, encompass the particle inside a rectangle like this. That means, draw one rectangle encompassing the particle inside. 
Okay. So, if you can draw the rectangle, then uh, the length of the rectangle is called long diameter L and the breadth is actually called short diameter B. Okay. So, by knowing L and B, you can characterize the uh, particle, irregular particle. Okay. Another uh, method for uh, characterizing irregular particle is you can start from a line and then you can go azimuthally 2 pi angle over here or rather uh, 360 degree angle over here and at every radial sector you find out what is the distance or what is the radius of the uh, particle starting from the center of gravity. Okay. So, here I have shown you one typical uh, curve where you can see from 0 to 2 pi we are showing over here the variation of theta where theta is measured from some reference need not to be always a horizontal one. Okay. And you see in the ordinate we have shown r theta, r theta is nothing but distance of the edge of the particle starting from the center of gravity okay, at, at a particular uh, azimuthal angle theta from the reference. So, you can get a typical shape of the uh, particle can be obtained from this r theta versus theta curve. Okay. So, in this way we can characterize the particle size and in this way we can characterize the particle shape. Okay. Then uh, as uh, we are talking about a gas particle or gas solid flow, we will be finding out uh, particles will not be always homogeneous in nature. You will be finding out uh, particles are having a wide range of uh, shapes and sizes. Okay. Now to characterize those, what we need to do? We need to go for size distribution. Okay. This uh, little bit of this type of things already we have seen in uh, dispersed flow. That means whenever we have seen the bubbly flow situations I have discussed, let us see it once again. So, let us say we are having a cluster of different sizes of the particles like this. Okay. So, starting from very small diameter to very big diameter particles we can observe over here. You see all the particles I have shown over here as a, spher as a uh, spherical mass or let us say a circular planar area, but uh, eventually you will be finding out all these particles are uh, irregular in nature. Okay. So, always by depending on the value of L and B, we can convert those into the spherical or equivalent planar circular. Uh, particles. Okay. So, once we know this particle cluster and their respective diameters, what we can do immediately we can find out mean diameter d bar as summation of d by n. Okay. So, all the particle diameters will be added up and then divided by the number of particles you will be getting the value of the mean diameter. Right. Now, uh, what we can do uh, to get the size distribution, let us classify okay, this particle cluster as a group of a small small span of diameters. Okay. For example, let us say here what I have done, uh, I have taken a small group starting from d1 minus del d to d1 plus del d. So, a very small span around d1 I have taken. Okay. So, whatever particles are lying in between this d1 minus small d and d1 plus small d, we will be counting those as uh, number of particles in this size distribution. Similarly, we can have another one around d2 and here around d3. So, in your uh, domain size of the particle, okay, so you are having a wide variety of particle sizes. So, in that if you can discretize in small small segments and if you count the numbers, then you will be finding out something like this a group of uh, particles, smaller particles over here and then progressing on here you will be finding out a group of larger particles. Okay. So, what we can do? We can call that we are having n 1 number of d 1 particles over here, n 2 number of you can count the numbers n 2 number of d 2 particles and subsequently n 3 number of d 3 particles. Now, if we add then d bar or mean diameter can be written as d 1 delta n 1, d 2 delta n 2 continuing so on divided by number of uh, total particle. So, actually this n is nothing but summation of delta n 1 plus summation of delta n 2 and so on. Okay. So, this is another way of finding out you know d okay. because if you are having a large number of particles in cluster finding out the average diameter by adding all those particles individual particles are difficult. So, what we do we take experimental measurements by taking a sieve which I will be showing you in the uh, next slide different sizes sieve we find out okay, uh, at some particular interval and we eliminate a particular range of the size. Okay. And then we count that how many uh, number of particles are there in that size range okay. and from there we evaluate the mean diameter like this. In that process what we need not to do individually all the particles diameter we need not to measure.
Okay. So, here I have shown a typical size distribution you can find out for around D1, D1 we are having delta N1, uh, around D2 we are having delta N2 and so on at the last uh, around Dn we are having uh, something around delta Nn. Okay. So, this type of size distribution one can obtain. right? Okay, what I was talking to you in the uh, next uh, previous slide, you see I have talked about the cumulative distribution. So, let us say we are taking a sheave like this, okay, having a particular size uh, of the sheave and we, we try to separate out the particles. So, you will be finding out that uh, particles bigger than the sieve size will be remaining at the top and particles which are smaller will be going down. Okay. So, in this way what you can do, you can, you can sieve out. Uh, or separate out a size of particles by doing this type of sieving in series that what will be the number of particles in a small uh, subsection around D1 or around D2 something like that. Okay. So, in that way we can sieve out and uh, you know if in that way if we try to find out what is D bar okay, and that then this D bar if we take in such a fashion that uh, above this d bar we are having the bigger size particles and below this d bar we are having smaller size particles. Okay. So, that we call oversize distribution and undersize distribution. So, oversize distribution is that the particles having sizes larger than this uh, you know mean size okay. and the particles having uh, lower size than this mean size will be coming under undersize distribution. So, what we can do we can define r as oversize distribution and f as undersize distribution. So, a r will be d m which is the median diameter d m to infinity it can go up to infinity. So, d m to infinity and f d d d f d d d means how many particles are there of d h size okay, more than d m. Similarly, capital F will be 0 to d m f d d d for the lower sizes, lower sizes can be starting from 0 to the median diameter d m. Okay. So, if you try to plot uh, the f versus d and r versus d as I have defined over here oversize and undersize distribution you will be getting a plot like this. So, continuously increasing, so you will be finding out lower size very small number and here also the higher size also you will be getting very small number. Okay. Now, uh, there is a concept that uh, if you can find out uh, that sigma by mu uh, of this type of uh, cumulative size distribution whereas, sigma is a standard deviation and mu is your mean. So, sigma by mu as will be less than 0 0.1 to uh, uh, consider the particle distribution as mono dispersed particles. Okay. So, if sigma by mu is less than 0 0.1 then we will be calling this one as mono dispersed particles. Okay. So, let us see next. Uh, so, after uh, defining the particles we will be going for uh, uh, the finding out the velocity and you know loading ratio whenever the particle is actually being transported uh, in the coexistence of uh, gas. So, let us see we are having let us say over here the uh, gas and the solids. So, what we will be considering over here. So, uh, you see rho d is equals a uh, rho bar d is equals to rho d v d by v. Okay. Similarly, rho bar c is equals to rho c v c by v. Okay. So, now here you see d symbolizes the dispersed phase and c symbolizes the continuous phase. So, that means in case of gas solid flow this rho bar d is nothing but your uh, uh, density of the uh, mean density for the uh, dispersed phase that means the solid phase and rho bar c is the mean density for the uh, 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 continuous phase that means the gaseous phase. Okay. Now, if we try to find out what is the you know loading ratio okay, z okay, then we will be finding out that is nothing but the ratio between mass flow of dispersed phase divided by the mass flow rate of the continuous phase. So, once we try to get the mass flow rate you see here we are having the mass flow rate. Okay. So, what we can find out this is nothing but rho d bar small v divided by rho c bar small u where v and u are the corresponding velocity of the dispersed phase and uh, continuous phase respectively. Okay. So, this loading is very very important parameter capital Z is very very important parameter. Okay. Then let us try to find out that let us say we are having particles like this mono dispersed particles like this. So, having uniform sizes. So, let us say the particle particle spacing is L. 
okay so between two particles we are having mean uh, spacing as l okay so how to find out this l okay now it is also important that if we are having the diameter of the particle let's say that is d so we'll be finding out always this uh, alpha d which is nothing but the void fraction for the dispersed phase can be always correlated with the l and d what is the length between two particles or spacing between two particles and whatever are the diameters of the particles okay so you can find out over here that this alpha d can be characterized as pi by 6 d cube which is nothing but the uh, volume of this uh, particle having d as diameter and l cube is actually a uh, rectangular parallel pi between two particles having l as the uh, characteristics length ok. So, this l cube you can say the overall size okay of the domain having particle as well as the gas and alpha by uh, pi by 6 d cube is actually the uh, volume for the uh, a particle solid particle. So, their ratio obviously will be the uh, void fraction for the dispersed phase or the particle. Okay. So, from here I can write down L by D is equals to pi by 6 alpha D to the power 1 by 3. Okay. Now, here you see uh, uh, we can get a chart like this also in literature this kind of charts are very popular. Once we know the value of L by D, okay, different values are over here, you can find out what is the value of alpha. So, what essentially you need to do if you are finding out somehow what is the value of alpha D quickly by referring to this type of chart you can get what is the value of L by D that means how closely the particles are spaced. right? Then let us see another important parameter earlier slide I have shown you that this particle velocity v and uh, your uh, carrier phase velocity or gas velocity u those are very very important parameters. Okay. Those will be defining the loading z. Okay. Here we will be trying to find out what is the relationship between this u and v. So, here I have shown you a figure this particle is moving with v velocity by virtue of the carrier phase gas u over here. Okay. So, uh, in this context let me define uh, what is uh, a non-dimensional number called Stokes number. So, Stokes number STV we call as the ratio between particle response time tau v divided by the time characteristics of the flow which is tau f. Okay. So, once we know the value of tau v and tau f one can find out what is the Stokes number for the flow. Okay. Remember this particle response time is very very important because it will be defining that how frequently the particles are colliding amongst themselves. Okay. So, uh, uh, we, can, uh, we can easily find out that particle velocity small v can be related to u into 1 minus 1 by e to the power t by tau v where tau v is nothing but particle response time. By the way this is coming from your uh, uh, collision rate. So, once you find out what is the collision rate those are dependent on the velocity of the gaseous phase as well as the velocity of particle. So, from there if we integrate we will be getting this type of equations. Okay. So, uh, what we can do particle response time we can write down tau v is equals to rho d d square divided by 18 mu c. So, this is coming from your fluid mechanics. Uh, so, uh, your tau v which is nothing but your particle response time can be written as rho d d square by 18 mu c. Okay. Now, uh, let us discuss uh, whenever we have talked about monodisperse flow. So, there comes a, uh, a situation where we are having both the cases that means the particle is closely packed inside the gas or loosely packed. Dependent on that what we have done we have characterized the gas solid flow as a dilute flow and dense flow. Okay. So, whenever tau v by tau c is less than 1 we will be calling that one as dilute flow and whenever we will be finding out tau v by tau c is greater than 1 we will be calling the gas solid flow as dense flow. Okay. So, already I have shown you what is tau v and tau c those are corresponding particle response time and time characteristics of the flow. Okay. So, uh, actually this tau c is nothing but the time between the collisions. Okay. So, between two particles we are having collision. So, uh, for that we will be finding out how much time is required. Okay. So, this is very very important to know the Stokes number and your corresponding uh, particle response time. Okay. Particle response time you can get from the uh, corresponding uh, physical properties of the gas solid flow okay. and your tau c one can obtain from what type of flow you are having over here and using this two you can find out the relationship between v and u. Okay. 
Next let me see, let us show you uh, that uh, what are the different types of uh, gas solid flow uh, we see in industry. In industry those gas solid flows are mainly uh, observed in pneumatic conveying lines. So, you will be finding out that in pneumatic conveying line gas and solid are coexistently flowing uh, with each other and you see the pneumatic conveying lines are two different types positive pressure system and vacuum pressure system. So, here in this slide I have shown you one positive pressure system. Let us see the components. So, here we are having first a hopper. In this hopper we are, we are actually load all the uh, solid particles. Those solid particles can come out through this valve and that can uh, actually come in coexistence with the air flowing through this uh, blower. So, blower is taking air from outside and whenever it is flowing like this due to gravity uh, the solid is falling in the line and that is carrying for forward in this pipeline. So, after carrying forward in over here in using in this pipeline which is having bend over here and then it uh, after doing its purpose it can be filtered over here. Okay. So, there are various types of filters for separating gas solid flow which I am not uh, did, uh, briefing over here, but what we can do using this filter we can separate out the particles over here, we can receive over here and you know uh, rest gas we can dump in the uh, atmosphere. So, actually from this hopper we have carried forward the particle in the receiver by virtue of a gas solid flow. Okay. So, this actually reduces your frictional pressure that is why we go for pneumatic conveying lines. Okay, but, but important point over here is that you see blower is in the uh, before the hopper section which is called actually a positive pressure. Okay. Then uh, next one let us see the vacuum type. In vacuum type you will find out that though the gas is uh, coming over here and taking the particle from the hopper, but it is not actually driven by a positive pressure of a you know blower. In, virtue, uh, in place of that what we have given at the end of the receiver we have given a vacuum pump which is actually dragging the air from atmosphere through this pipeline. Okay. And you know at the end of this one receiver will be collecting these uh, particles, the particles by virtue of the weight it will be falling down and gas through this filtration devices it will be actually sucked by the vacuum pump. So, actually this in this system you will be finding out negative pressure is occurring whereas in the previous system you will be finding a positive pressure is occurring. Okay. Next let us see what are the different types of flow regimes available in gas solid flow. So, uh, first one is homogeneous flow. So, you can find out homogeneous mixture of gas and solid over here. Then you will be finding out degenerated uh, homogeneous flow. You can find out that homogeneous flow is actually becoming a heterogeneous one low towards the lower side lots of particles are being uh, dumped. And then immature dune flow somewhere uh, some sort of dune type of thing you can find out, but that is immature that has not taken its usual shape. Then later on with increase of you know uh, your uh, loading ratio you will be finding out that a proper dune flow you can see which we see in our uh, deserts lots of dunes similar kind of things. Okay, now, if the dunes are actually getting higher and higher then you can find out those are actually almost clogging the pipeline and two dunes can merge also amongst themselves. So, that is called degenerated dune flow. Then uh, this dune actually will be encompassing some amount of bubble over here. Okay. So, uh, you can find out this is separating one bubble to another bubble. This is not actually bubble, this is actually mixture of gas and solid flow. So, uh, here you can find out a dune which has almost touched the upper wall is actually separating two gas solid domain region. So, this you can call a slug flow kind of thing. Then eventually a uh, proper slug flow, you see the dune has totally touch the upper wall. So, this portion is actually uh, detached from this uh, upstream portion. Then degenerated slug flow. So, if parting particle loading ratio still increases then you will be finding out that small small air will be entrapped because this slug flow will be also becoming in, uh, immature. The height of the particle deposition will be increasing in the slug flow domain also and you will find out that a small bubble will be actually getting entrapped in the degenerated slug flow. Uh, if you increase it further then you will be finding out that uh, this upper layer will be forming a ripple kind of thing like this. Okay. So, below that you, you will be having a very high particle loading ratio and above that you are having small ripples okay. and then at the end uh, you will be finding out the pipe has been plugged with the solid. Okay. So, with increase of the particle loading ratio starting from the homogeneous to pipe plugged we can find out. Okay. So, this has been taken from uh, book by Croe, Cloten and Croe. Okay, then uh, this is very important uh, depending on you know 
particle uh, ga gas velocity and your pressure gradient inside the pipeline, we can plot that what type of flow velocities or what type of flow regimes you will be having inside the pipeline. This is called Jenge plot. So, you see here I have shown a pipeline. Okay. So, you see here the hopper is dropping the particle in the gas pipeline. So, this is your length L and let us say the pressure between the upstream and downstream we are having P. So, P by L is actually your pressure gradient okay, in Pascal per meter and in abscissa we are having your superficial gas velocity. Okay. So, whatever velocity of the gas we are having over here that we can see. Now, so if we start at a very high superficial gas velocity, then we will be finding out that it is having homogeneous type of nature over here. And then if we uh, if we go in the upper side that means the pressure gradient in or you can see that pressure gradient increases delta p by l increases then you will be finding out small depositions over here okay and if you uh, reduce the gas velocity then slowly slowly you will be finding out that slug uh, type of regime and a, here you can find out some sort of you know what in the previous slide i have shown you over here immature dune flow or dune flow so those things oh, you can see over here at very low gas velocities Okay. Uh, in case of fine particles, so this is example of coarse particle okay, in case of bigger sized particles. In case of fine particles, you can find out we are having over here homogeneous flow and then once the uh, uh, pressure gradient increases, you will be finding out some sort of uh, stratified flow kind of thing. So, at the lower layer you are having the solids and in the upper layer you are having once again uh, dilute gas flow mixture, gas solid mixture. And if you reduce the velocity, you can find out that somewhere you are having that slug flow kind of thing, whatever we have seen in case of coarse particles also. In these two plots, Jenge plots, we are also having uh, air only uh, pressure gradient, pressure drop okay, for different velocity. If you consider only air is flowing, so this is the pressure drop. But you can find out for different uh, loading ratios W, so you can find out what will be the pressure drops over here uh, and along with different. Uh, 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 different flow regimes. Okay. In this uh, curves, we have also shown uh, one line which is called saltation velocity. This saltation velocity is very important. After this uh, uh, velocity, uh, the gas and solid will be in homogeneous mixture. Below above this, uh, sorry, uh, velocity lower than this, you will be always finding out that there will be some sort of deposition at the pipeline. Okay. So, let us see what is saltation velocity. So, in case of saltation velocity, very important thing is to find out first the critical uh, particle diameter. So, this has been given by Matsumoto, he has proposed that critical particle diameter del dp star can be uh, found out as dp star is equals to 1.39 capital D into rho p by rho c to the power minus 0 0.74. Already we know what is rho p and rho c and capital D is the pipe diameter, so one can find out dp star. If dp star if your particle diameter dp is higher than dp star, that means you are having coarse particle, then we can find out the saltation velocity in this fashion, where it is a function of the uh, froud number for the particle and froud number for the gas. Okay. In this fashion, froud number can be found out ut by root over of gdp, ugs by root over of gd. Okay. So, terminal velocity uh, ut uh, already we have shown you what happens for a single particle, this will be similar for a uh, bubble terminal velocity, whatever we have shown you in the dispersed phase uh, uh, lecture. Now, if dp your particle diameter is less than this critical particle diameter dp star, then saltation velocity can be found out in this fashion and here you see frp is absent, frp is not shown over here. So, it is only dependent on frss which is, which is the ugs by root over of gd. Okay. So, in this way we can find out the saltation velocity and find out after which uh, velocity you will be having uh, homogeneous flow. Okay. Then let us try to find out what is the pressure drop in a uh, dilute pipe dilute phase system. Okay. So, pressure drop delta p will be actually dependent on the component whatever I have shown you delta p will be delta p blower plus delta p feed section where you are feeding through the hopper. Then you will be having delta p acceleration due to gas and solid because inside the pipeline you will be having accelerational pressure drop. Then we are having delta p state section. Okay. And finally, if you are having any bend as I have shown you in the pipeline, we are having lots of bends for that also you will be having some pressure drop. Okay. Now, delta P blower and delta P feed system that is actually carrying uh, single phase gas. So, uh, pressure drop in those sections can be found out using single phase considerations which already I have shown you how to find out using Reynolds number and finding out the friction factor all those things. So, you can carry forward those calculations and find out delta P blower and delta P feed sections. I will be discussing over here what about 
about this delta p acceleration first. So, here you see delta p acceleration it will be causing due to two uh, factors first one is gas and then second one is solid. So, you see delta p acceleration total I have written as delta p acceleration for gas plus delta p acceleration for solid. So, for gas it is very easy delta p acceleration for gas will be half rho g u g square okay. and for solid you will be writing down this one as uh, uh, u p w s by a where u p minus u g is actually your terminal velocity for the particle. So, once you know the terminal uh, particle size you can find out terminal velocity and you know u g is always known to you what is the gas uh, velocity you can find out from the blower data also. So, from there you can find out what is u p you can put it over here to get the uh, uh, delta p acceleration for the solid. Once we add this to using this equation that means this gas and solid accelerations we will be getting delta p acceleration comes out to be half rho g u g square 1 plus 2 into w s by a rho g u g into u p by u g. This can be this uh, in the right hand side uh, the, the ratio between all these uh, terms can be written as z into u p by u g. Okay. So, z is nothing but w s by a rho g u g. Okay. So, finally, we get that accelerational pressure drop is nothing but half rho g u g square easy to find out into 1 plus 2 z into u p by u g. How to find out u p just now I have described uh, from terminal velocity it will be coming and you have to find out this z which is nothing but your uh, loading. Okay. Uh, uh, for finding out your u p and u g uh, there is another correlation which is called uh, modified Hinkle correlation. Uh, so, this correlation also helps sometime. So, u p by u g uh, is written as 1 minus 0 0.68 dp to the power 9, 0.92 capital D to the power 0. Point, minus 0 0.54 rho p to the power 0. 0.5 and rho g to the power minus 0. 0.2. So, this Hinkle correlation can also be used if you do not want to find out the terminal velocity. Okay. Then uh, for the straight section we know that for the straight section we will be having the uh, uh, static pressure head that means the gravitational pressure head as well as you will be having the frictional pressure head. So, already we have discussed that how to find out the static pressure head that will be rho p into 1 minus epsilon into delta z uh, g where delta z is the gravitational height. Epsilon here can be defined as uh, 1 minus w s by a rho p into u g minus u terminal. Okay. And uh, the frictional part can be written as uh, frictional part can be written as over here uh, delta p gas plus delta p solid. So, delta p gas will be actually uh, lambda f rho g u g square l by 2 d okay, where lambda f can be written as 1.325 divided by ln of k s by 3.7 d plus 5.74 re to the power 0 0.9 whole square. Okay. Here uh, k s by d for the common pipes it will be something around 0 0.001. So, all these things are given by uh, modified Hinkle equations. So, next part is how to find out the delta p solid. For delta p solid you see this will be z which is your loading multiplied by lambda z into rho g u g square l by 2 d here only unknown is lambda z that uh, waiver has been given uh, in 1982 some correlation using lambda z for lambda z. So, he has told that lambda z can be found out as k z to the power a f r to the power b f r s to the power c multiplied by capital D by d p to the power d. Okay. Here lots of empirical constants are necessary. First things you see we are uh, we need to go for A, B and C and D. So, those uh, constants are given like this uh, K is also there. So, K, A, B, C, D for fine and coarse particles how to find out Weber has proposed all this. So, once we know what parameter we need to follow whether it is fine or coarse we can find out what is lambda g putting the value of lambda g over here we can find out the solid pressure drop okay, solid frictional pressure drop. Okay, so, rest part is nothing but your bend pressure drop in the equation I have shown you only part is bend pressure drop state section already we have considered acceleration we have already considered. So, for the bend uh, Marcus and chamber they have given correlation in 1986 they said that delta p bend is actually capital B into 1 plus z into rho g u g square by 2. Okay, where uh, R b is the bend radius. Okay, if R b by d uh, is equals to 2 then b will be 1.5, if R b by d equals to 4 then it will be 0 0.75, b equals to 0 0.75 and if R b by d is more than 6 then always take b equals to 0 0.5. So, this chamber and Marcus they have considered for the uh, bends. Okay. 
So, uh, here I have shown you how to calculate the pressure drop for a uh, pipeline carrying uh, dilute phase system. Okay. So, uh, with this let us summarize the uh, lecture. So, in this lecture we have described oversized and undersized particle distribution and compared uh, it with mean diameter. We have discussed about solid particle response time in a flow of air and characterized it with Stokes number. Uh, different components of pneumatic conveying line we have discussed in this issue we have talked about your positive and vacuum type and various components of pressure drop in dilute gas solid flow we have presented over here. So, let us test your understanding we are having three questions over here state position of prime mover in vacuum type conveying line remember this is vacuum type conveying line we are having uh, two types. So, this is vacuum type second type. So, four op options are there before loading in between hopper and receiver after receiving in the gas after receiver in the gas line and third one no specific position. Okay. So, the correct answer is obviously part C we have shown after the receiver in the gas line we give the vacuum pump. Question second question at smaller density difference between particles and gas which characteristics of gas solid flow is observed at very smaller density okay, uh, between the gas and particles. So, rho p minus rho g is very small. So, you will be finding out we are having four options cohesive spoutable uh, air like and sand like. So, these are uh, the answer you can find out from Gilders diagram. So, obviously, the correct answer is cohesive one because at lower um, density difference you will be finding out always cohesive. Third question pressure drop in a pipeline carrying gas solid flow and having bend we are having four uh, options increases with loading ratio, decreases with loading ratio, remains invariant with loading ratio and finally, last one initially increases and then decreases with loading ratio. Okay. So, pressure drop will be always uh, having bend. So, that will be coming from uh, Marcus and chamber correlation. So, the correct answer is the first one increases with loading ratio. Here I end my uh, lecture as well as the course uh, wish you uh, best of luck for the final examination. Thank you.